Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little more about um, some advanced approaches to making uh, compound masks, right? We talked about in a previous video, the concept of mask stacking, and that can be really cool. It just I mean, you, you can be creative with it. You can be technical with it. What does mask stacking do for you? Well, for one thing, it allows us to make compound masks with different thoughts in our brain. Let's say the mission here in this shot is to increase the saturation of the saturated midtones. You see what I'm talking about? That's basically two ranges that we're targeting. We're targeting saturated areas and we're targeting midtones. Well, how do we put a mask together from all of that? It's pretty straightforward. And again, there's multiple ways, but let's talk about one method. And after we do it, we're also going to put together a visualizer so you can see exactly what the mask is. We had to create it at one point, so we might as well actually see it, right? All right, because we don't have to necessarily look at it and make it work, but let's go ahead and look at it anyway. First step. Let's get our saturation data. Previous video, maybe not the previous, but one of the previous videos recently from this one, we talked about creating saturation masks and we used selective color, which is not the only way to do it, but it's a nice way to do it. I have a preset for sat mask chroma. Again, in the other video, please check it out. Hopefully we'll link to it here. Um, if you choose that, it sets up selective color in such a way that now I have Chroma saturation. This is my more saturated areas and it's pretty accurate. You know, the blue pool is very colorful, obviously. Her skin tone and hair is colorful, but the patio and outfit and chair are less colorful. And although the denim jeans have some color in them, they're somewhere in the middle. This is a very accurate chroma base saturation mask. Now, we need it, but we need to put it away for a second. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. We can make a channel. We, we can do all kinds of things. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten to a new layer to have it right here on the layers palette. Shift Option Command E or Shift Alt Control E. OK, and we're going to call that our set. All right. We don't we don't even need them anymore. So let's get rid of the select, selected color. Everything we do here, we can create into an action. But I just want to show you the processes so you can kind of think about it. So again, my mission was to modify, maybe boost the saturation, maybe color grade, I don't know, modify the saturated midtones, which is very specific, right? So let's make a midtones mask, a couple of different ways. I'm going to use a gradient map. We could make a mathematically linear one, but we're just going to make one. We're going to eyeball it. Great way is, of course, a gradient map. Black and black and black. Let's put this one in the middle just to be thorough. And I think I'm going to bring in these a little bit just to have a little more, a little more mid, okay? All right, so as you can see, this is basically our midtones, right? Which crosses over a little bit with the uh, with the saturated areas, but not really, obviously kind of varies depending on what's going on. This is just mids. Here again, Shift Option Command or Shift Alt Control E, and we're gonna put that mids. Like I said, there's different ways to do this. We can, we can create channels, we can, I mean, there's things we can do. We can save them onto a temporary mask. I mean, there's just options. All right, now, I told you that we're going to make this in a way that we can also visualize it. We need to be able to see what the mask is, or what the new mask is going to look like. But let's make it first, okay? Let's say the mission here is to uh, add saturation to the mid saturated midtones, okay? So we have a hue and saturation layer. Now, this mask we don't need, okay? We can copy it in and all that. But what I'm just going to do is to keep things super simple is delete it, okay? Now, we can choose one or the other. I'm going to choose on... The main one, the first one, is going to be the mid-range, okay? So if I turn it on, there it is. How do I select the luminosity of what I'm looking at? That is create a selection, option command, or alt control 2, okay? Now it's selected. Turn off mids. Go back to the hue and saturation that does not have a mask. Click the mask. Okay, cool. Now hue and saturation, that adjustment layer, is set up to only affect the midtones. Now we're going to group it, okay? And we're going to call it set mids, just, just to be thorough turn on our saturation mask. We need to also select what it looks like. In other words, luminosity in front of us, option command or alt control two. There it is, turn it off, go to our sat mids, that folder and create a mask. It's a mask within a mask. All right, so now if I boost saturation, I'm only boosting saturation or reducing it in the mid range that's also in the saturated range. Now again, that's not super obvious. And if I change the hue around, you can see how it's affecting things, okay? So how do we visualize that? Well, it's actually quite simple. What we're gonna do, we're gonna create a solid color, black on our background. Okay, this is a hue and saturation layer at the moment. We're gonna create a white one. Eh, we could've made it red, but there's white, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and turn this one off and we're gonna copy this mask over here, there. 
let's delete the hue and saturation for the moment. This is our new mask, okay? This is the mid-range mask. This is the saturation mask. And this is them kind of cut out of each other, okay? This is how we visualize it. And if we need to create it for other purposes, for example, I'm looking at it. So I can hit Option, Command, Alt, Control, 2, get that selection, all right? No problem there. And then I can make a new mask. Let's say we can go ahead and uh, la, la, let's do, I don't even know. Let's go to curves. Why not? Turn off everything else. And now we have curves set up with our saturated midtones selected. And that's it. We can do all kinds of things. Maybe we can go to our red channel and modify the red channel in a very subtle way. Take down the greens. See? So that is a complicated, or I don't want to say complicated, but just a more advanced way of doing mask stacking. Let's do another example just for fun. How about uh, we'll do the, we can use the same method of the, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the selective color for this. Why don't we do the mid-range reds, which in this case might be a little off because it's only mid-range is going to be in red, most likely. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens. Okay, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to go to selective color. Okay, now I have another default here called all black start. All that means is that it completely blacks everything out, allowing me, we have videos about this, by the way, I go into reds and then I choose, bring it up. This is the red and that's it. This is the pure red chroma data in a mask form. So once again, we flatten that to a new layer and we're going to call it reds, right? And then for fun, you know what? Let's do the shadows. Let's do the shadows. So here's what we're going to do. A couple of different ways to make shadows. I think what I'll do is I'll do a mathematical shadows. That's what we'll do. So we're going to do, 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 deset. Uh, you know what? I'm going to deset a different way. I'm going to deset with Luma. A little more technical, but whatever. I'll probably deset on top too. We'll put that on color. Let's go ahead and put another solid color, 50%. I could have just duped it, I guess. That's all right. No big deal. And then we're going to put that on divide and then we're going to invert it. And there's some shadows. Um, d -d 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 this is our desaturator. I can put it on top too and see how it changes. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the bottom. That's fine. So there's the shadows. All right. So shift option command E. That's more linear shadows. Again, mathematically done. There we go. And there's our shadows. Cool. All right. So let's go. Uh, we have selective color done. Delete that. Let's delete these three. Now let's do something to our sh reds that are only in the shadows, <laughs> which is extremely specific. I know. How about uh, hue and saturation? You know what? Hue and saturation is such a great way to, to visualize. By the way, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the visibility, the luminosity of what I'm looking at on the shadows. There we go. So now when I create hue and saturation, that mask is already there. Then I'll group it. Turn on reds, select that. Yes, yes, not more than 50% is shown. Go to the group and click mask. And now it's very subtle, but I'm subtly changing the reds only in the shadows. And if you're asking well, what happens if we flip it, that's true, we can flip it. Let's just do it again, just to be thorough. Okay, so we'll put the shadows, select, come back to here, invert, turn on the reds, select them. It'll yell at me and then invert. Now it's the same basic idea. We're still modifying the shadows, excuse me, the reds only in the shadows. So as you can see, this is what hue and saturation is affecting, but then the secondary mask maps it only onto the reds. So mask stacking like this, very, very powerful for some technical reasons. You might be trying to create some kind of um, you know decomposition or specific extractions, and they can be very, very useful. Don't get me wrong. But it's also a great way to just get creative. It's a great way to, you know, limit things so you can get extra creative with something because you never know what it could turn into. See how subtle that is, right? Who knows what it can turn into? You can create actions to do this kind of thing. And you can come up with all kinds of other mask within a mask double extraction. That's what I call them anyway, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to filter one range through another range. It can be red, shadows, mid, saturated, desaturated, all kinds of different ideas. But I just want to get you guys thinking about how we do this, how we you know, process the information linearly up through the layers, right? And, you know, mass stacking is just a cool way to do it. So yeah, it, sound, it all sounds technical and it seems like, why am I going to make all these layers? And I understand all that. But every now and then, it's exactly what you need. And if you program into actions, then things become even quicker. You just hit an action, run what you need, create the separate, not the separations, create the mass that you need, create the stack that you need, 
and you're good to go. And you know, we can talk about this, like I've been saying recently on all our videos, we can get a little more advanced, a little more technical on this kind of stuff. But mask stacking, excuse me, mask stacking in general is not just to show off, look what I know, or let me do some cool stuff. It can also lead to some really, really creative results depending on how you blend your different masks.